Hello. I remember when I was three years old, back in my nursery class, we were singing this song, or at least trying to sing this song. And some of you might have heard of it, actually. It's about a wise man who builds his house upon the rock and a foolish man who builds his house upon the sand. And when the rains came down and the floods came up, it was the house on the rock that stood firm. Looking back now, I see that there's a clear message to this song. And that is, the best way to allow all of us to flourish as much as possible is to provide us with firm foundations from which to build our lives. In the song, these foundations were a physical rock from which the wise man built his house. But now I see these foundations as financial. And that is enough money to cover our basic necessities, a roof over our head, food on our table, heat and light for our home before we earn extra money through paid employment. Because that's the idea I want to share with you today, that we shouldn't have to work just to survive. Now, I know what you're thinking, and it was actually emphatically articulated by a so-called social media troll last time we did this back in November. And that is, why should I listen to some posh bloke with a ridiculous double-barreled name <laughs> and a centre parting in his hair tell me about why we shouldn't have to work to survive? Well, they were right. That haircut, absolutely <laughs> terrible. But for those of you who are sceptical about this idea, I invite you to consider this with me. Because if work is just about survival, just about putting food on our table, just about getting a roof over our head, or even just about struggling to make it to the end of the month, week, or even day, then it's very difficult for any of us to look beyond that. For it is only when we can look past the question of what do I need to do today to survive, that we can ask ourselves, what do I want to do to live? Now, this isn't my idea. And it's not something I've read in a book or a theory or anything like that. It's actually the benefits of it can be seen all around us. Take this university right here. Hundreds of thousands of students, many of you will be sitting in this room today, a part of a vibrant community of student-led organisations, societies, social enterprises, startups, voluntary organisations, all kinds of things. TEDx, University of Edinburgh, being one example. Another example, as Alistair said earlier, is the Buchanan Institute, Edinburgh's first student-led think tank, which I and a few others helped set up back in January. Now, none of us do these things because we have to, but because we love doing them. And for many of us, they almost become like full-time jobs. And people ask us, you know, do you get paid to do it? But we don't, for the most part. And I speak for myself, but I also did it because I could. You see, I was lucky. I had enough money through a combination of student loans and allowances to cover my basic necessities so that I didn't need to work. And I stress this because in reality, if I was having to work 30 hours, 20 hours, even 15 hours a week on top of my studies just to cover my basic necessities of being here, then there's no way I would have had the time and energy necessary to set up the Buchanan Institute. And many people will say, that's all well and good. I mean, these voluntary student organisations, they're very nice, yeah, yeah, but, but where's the money going to come from? Who's going to make the money so that we can pay for this situation where nobody needed to work just to survive? Well, the most entrepreneurial and innovative people in our society also benefited from a situation where they didn't need to work just to survive. Take, for example, Steve Jobs. Back in 1976, he co-founded Apple whilst working with his friend Steve Wozniak in his parents' garage. The Jobs wasn't rich. But he had a roof over his head. He had food on his table. He had all the appliances and tools he needed so that he could focus his time and energy 
on creating the first Apple prototype in 1976. Because you see, if Steve Jobs had to work maybe in a minimum wage job, 50 hours, 40 hours a week, just to pay for his basic necessities, then he wouldn't have been the founder of Apple. We may never have heard of iPhones or iPods. But let me take you to the Namibian village of Ochivaro Omatara. For it is here where an organization called the Basic Income Earth Network conducted a simple yet groundbreaking experiment. They provided every single Namibian villager in this village with a basic income enough to cover their basic subsistence. Now, the skeptical among us, and I was actually talking to a few today, would say, well, these Namibians, if they're given enough to survive on, then they're going to be lazy. They're not going to work. They're going to sit on their asses all day. But actually, the opposite happened. The percentage of those involved in income-generating activities actually rose in that year from 44% to 55%. Because this is what happened. Freed from reliance on low-paid wage labor just to cover their survival, the villagers could choose what they did with their lives and decide how they earn extra money for themselves and their families. And for many, this was starting up their own small businesses, becoming dressmakers, brick makers, or bread bakers. And then people have said, well, that's all well and good. But that's Namibia. That's a developing country. The West is completely different. It won't work. Well, for them, we can say Canada. In 1976, the Canadian government conducted a similar experiment in the town of Dauphine, Manitoba. Again, every single person who lived in that town no longer had to work just to survive. It was called the town without poverty. Once again, people didn't stop working. The only groups of people who worked slightly less in that year were mothers and some fathers with newborn babies and some teenagers who, relieved from the pressures of earning money for their families, could now go back to school. But something else happened. You see, relieved from the daily mental and physical stresses of having to work to survive, the town without poverty became a healthier one. They actually, in that year, saved 13% on their overall healthcare costs. Something in the UK with strains on NHS budgets we could perhaps think about. So what about the UK? Could we try something similar here? Well, actually, yes. An organization called the Citizens Income Trust have shown that by simply reorganizing our existing tax and benefit system, we could provide every single UK adult with nearly 3,700 pounds a year. And this is without hardly spending an extra penny. How? Well, first of all, this basic income would replace those means-tested benefits that we would no longer need, whilst ensuring no one was worse off. But also, it would replace the personal tax allowance that we get to a certain level of our income. So rather than paying tax and then getting some money back in a personal tax allowance from the government, you would have this tax-free cash lump sum called the basic income that stands in its place. And then, well, what if people say, well, but what if the rich get it? The rich don't need it. It wouldn't work. Well, then we can say, in this country, we have something called the basic state pension for all pensions. The basic state income is the same thing, but for all adults. And the Swiss, well, they could go further, much further. In 2016, they will hold a popular referendum to decide whether to introduce a basic annual income to every Swiss citizen of nearly £21,000 a year. Fully funded, fully costed. Sounds good. So, I want to ask you, let's imagine that you woke up in Switzerland the morning after that referendum passed, and you found yourself with a guarantee of £21,000 a year. Put your hands up, how many of you, would stop working completely. There is there's actually nobody. Not one person. Well, 
it's not actually surprising, but you know, some of you might work a bit less, you know, spend more time with the family, spend more time doing leisure. Some of you might realize that you hate your job and you're going to use that basic income as a platform to go and do something that you really want to do. But you know, it isn't surprising because as many of us know, work doesn't have to be just about surviving. It can also be about following our passions, fulfilling our dreams, or as I've been so lucky to do during this whole TEDx process, meet and work with and build lifelong friendships. About six months ago, I was back at the hospital, just after my, uh, my sister had given birth to her son and, and my nephew, called Rafi. And I remember standing there, holding this little thing in my arms, and thinking, don't drop him. <laughs> then I thought, these questions about you know, the future and how to be OK in the future and what kind of society we can live in in the future aren't just for our generation sitting here. They're for the ones behind us, the ones being born or, or yet to be born. And when he, when he grows up and if he ever gets around to or wants to ask his uncle for some advice about work and life, which is wishful thinking, but, <laughs> but I like to tell him and be that, be that uncle that tells him something similar to what you might tell your kids or probably do. That you know, Rafi, don't just work because you need to, but do it so that every day you wake up doing something you're really passionate about with the people that you love. Now, my nephew will have, probably have the opportunity to do this. He may never have to work just to survive. And people have said to me, so Johnny, in that case, why do you care? Why do you care whether or not people should have to work, whether or not they should have to work to survive? Because it's not enough. It's not enough that my nephew has this opportunity. It's not enough that I have this opportunity. It's not even enough that many people I know and many of us in this room probably have this opportunity. In fact, it's not enough until every single person, every single one of us in this room, in this country, or even this world, can at least wake up every single morning and genuinely ask themselves, not what do I need to do today just to survive, but what do I want to do? to live. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Enjoy the rest of the talk.